Uh, hello, my name is Anthony Campolo. I am a developer who uh, is currently working at a company called StepZen. It's actually a fairly new role for me. And I used to do a lot of work, or still do a lot of work, on a framework called Redwood JS. But today I'm here to talk about Svelte. And Svelte is a super cool thing that you guys already know about. This is Svelte Meetup. But we're going to talk about a specific Svelte framework called ElderJS. And ElderJS is a good site for SEO. And we're going to kind of get into why that is. So first off, it is Elder is an opinionated static site generator built for SEO. Uh, the idea being that it is able to generate a lot of pages and is good for web crawlers. And it's built with a lot of opinionated ideas of how you should do all that. So you can still have a lot of velocity in terms of your build times. This was created by Nick Reese, who was creating a website called Elder Guide. Elder Guide is for uh, elderly care homes and finding information on that. So he wanted to be able to build a very large site that would be easy to have people find information in it. And you're probably wondering, don't we have thousands of these things, static site generators? That is, there's definitely a lot of them and they're super popular tools, but they're going to have different pros and cons based on their architecture, based on what languages they're written in. And I think that Elder is a really interesting one that if you're looking for this kind of tool, you should be looking at. So the real problem with static site generators in general is that they aren't really made for large sites because they need to do some sort of transformation between what you are writing in your actual source code and then what is getting shipped to the web because you're going to be writing, you could be writing it in Ruby or you could be writing it in Go, depending on whatever static site generator you're using. And it's always going to just spit out a bunch of HTML at the end of the day. And you have this trouble where if it's written in a language that there needs to be a lot of compilation, then it may take a really long time to do that process. And this is a benchmark of ElderJS's build time. So we are benchmarking 18,000 pages. And there's two benchmarks. The first is a budget four core virtual machine, which does it in about eight minutes. And then bare metal, which can do it in a little under a minute and a half. And then on the right is all the metrics you get, which is in milliseconds at the top in a hundredths of a millisecond, and then at the bottom around a hundred milliseconds for the longest render. Now there's a lot of other features of Elder that we're not really going to get into. We're just going to kind of get you set up and show just how to uh, create an Elder application and get it online. And we'll talk a little bit about routing and kind of show how to create a route. But this is all the other stuff that I can do. So it's a really powerful feature rich framework with things like hydration and short codes and plugins and all that goodness. And hooks is the way it passes around data. So this would be if we're going to go to like a deeper level is kind of like the two next talk of elders, like how all the hooks works There's a lot of them. But this is what we're going to get into today is going to be the explicit routing. So this is different from parameterized routing, which something like Express does. And what's happening here is on the left, we're actually creating our routes. And on the right is our Svelte component that is going to be displayed on that route. So if we look at the top left where it says module.exports, we're going to have three things, all permalink and data. And so these are each going to be async functions. And we have uh, the all one is just going to be the slug. So this is the simple route. So if you were to go to you know example.com forward slash simple, this is the route it would take you to. And then permalink is for m matching the request with the slug. And then the data is what it outputs. So you have here a title, and that title is Elder JS Route and Overview. And the content is an H2 with Hello World is inside. So if you look at the right, this is our Svelte component. So if you've seen Svelte before, this should be pretty, pretty easy to parse. You have your script at the top, your style in the middle, and then your markup on the bottom. So JavaScript, CSS, HTML. And in the JavaScript, we're exporting the data and helpers, going back to the hooks that are how we're passing around the data. And then the style, we're just giving a little margin, bottom, and uh, display inline block. And then for the title, it's being set to 
that title on the left. So Elder JS routes and overview. So it's being set inside the title tag, which is what appears like on your tab when you're browsing on your website. And then the AREF is a link to your home route. And then your H1 is again, the data.title. So the Elder JS route and overview. And then the data.content is where it gives you all the rest of the content, which will be the H2 hello world. And that is all the slides. So now we're going to basically build that out. And what we're going to be looking at here is I have this repo that I'll be following called mintbean-elderjs-test. And we're going to start with this command here, npx dget. And we're going to create uh, just a little project from this elderjs template. So we're going to copy this. Go to projects folder, and let's rename this Svelte. And we'll see that, you can still, oops. Cool. So I think that was it. Yeah, cool. And so to, First, install our dependencies, npm. And then we're going to have uh, two servers running, uh, basically our development server, and then roll up to, to watch for the changes. And once we get that going, we're going to get to our kind of general home page. And the, the Elder JS kind of like splash page home page is, is really cool. And it's kind of structured, so you have like uh, tutorial basically embedded inside of your boilerplate project that gets created. And so we'll we'll get into that more once we open it up. All right, so now that we got that going, let's get our editor open and we'll do npm run dev colon server. Let's get our server here going. And then npm dev colon rollup do that over here in our editor. And do, do, do. so that should be going. And I'll get this going. Make this a little bigger. And so hopefully this worked. So we're going to go to localhost 3000. Sometimes it's a little finicky. and. We have to kind of restart it, but um, this is probably a problem with my computer because it's super duper old. Okay, so that's good, and that's good. And this will be host. There we go. So this is the home page, and this is what I was saying about how it has a tutorial embedded in it because what it does is it has different routes that each take you to like a different explanation of how stuff works. So the simple one is what explains how to do routes, and then the home page is what we're looking at here. And then the blog is for each of these blog posts. So if you go to any of these blog posts, we'll see you have a blog post. And then if you come out, you see how we have these blog posts, and they have these little summaries here too. So you also can see how that's done as well. And then there's, let's actually get our project open on one side. So. So let's take a look at home. So this is the home page that we're looking at right now. OK. So we can just edit this. And for example, we change this to salt Bay Area. Typing a lot <laughs> these days. <laughs> Okay, so, and then we should see the change reflected on the right. So we see now Svelte Bay Area. And if we want to take this and make it the title, I'll be right here. And now we're going to see this title, Hello World with an LRJS, is now Svelte Bay Area. Cool. And then as we go down, we can see we have this blog teaser. 
So that's what these blog posts are. And then we have this uh, clock component. There it is right here. And that is this taken away. And then we've got the hook detail. So going back to the hooks, all this stuff is gives you like some documentation for each of them, tells you what they are, what they take, and what they do, because there's a lot of them. So that's pretty much all that. So let's create a route now. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in routes, create a new folder called new. And then it's going to have two files, one route.js, and then another one that's going to be new.svelte. And in route.js, we're going to have all permalink and data. So let's just start by getting all these in here. I would normally type this out, but just to save my fingers the typing, I'm going to just pop it in there. So we got our new slug, and then here's going to be spit out. So I do for all my talks, just put the thing of the thing that I'm doing in the thing. So we have our title and our content, which is going to be an H2 and a paragraph. And now we got that. We're going to go into our Svelte template over here. And this is going to be just basically what we saw in the slide. It's just going to display that little content. And when you create new folders and files and whatnot, you should usually need to restart the server. So let me kick these. Um, and then we're going to go to localhost forward slash new. And if all went according to plan, all did not go according to plan. So let me make sure that this guy over here is working. There we go. There we go. Just took a little while. Sweet. OK, so this is what we're looking at. Let's look at this one. So we've got Svelte Barrier as the title, Svelte Barrier, also into that H1. And then our content, H2, Hello World, and Paragraph root. OK, so that's all pretty good. But the next thing we really want is we want to put this bad boy on the internet. So let's close that up, close that up. And what's pretty cool is they give you this netlify.toml. So if you got a Netlify account, it's going to have this build command, and it'll publish your assets in your public folder. Or correctly, you want to take that off there. So now that we got that going, let's get a Git repo going. So we're going to create a Git repository, because Git repository is what you link to Netlify to get it deployed. And let's call this Salt Bay Area. And create repository. Now that we got that, we're going to get a init over here. This is going to initialize our Git repository. And then we're just going to add thing and I think that's all you need to do let's see okay um, okay that's fine cool and now we're gonna get commit that's good and we're gonna set our branch to main we're gonna set the remote origin to this Git repo right here that we just created. And then we're gonna push the whole thing to that thing. So the thing is on the thing. And then once that's done, we'll have our project right here. So now we got this going. We're going to go to Netlify. And Netlify is basically a like static site hoster that also does a million other things now. And you can connect it to GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. So we're going to do GitHub, and you just tell it the repo you want. And you will connect that repo. So since we have that Netlify.toml, 
it knew what our build and publish would need to be. And then we're going to go ahead and deploy this. And so deploy time is going to kind of vary from framework to framework. And this is where you can kind of see the, the real benefits of something like Svelte and how lightweight it is. Because like the entire deploy is still going to take like a minute or so because they have to spit up like a, a whole container to do this. But they're going to show you where the actual specific build time is for the site itself. And so for the site itself, the build time is going to be almost there. So you get some errors here. You don't really need to worry too much about that. That's for like the helper and data functions that aren't declared. So there's the actual build time of the site, uh, 20 pages in one and a half seconds. So that's that. And then that should be good to go. So if we now go to our website, we see our website. And there's our new route. All right. That is the whole talk. Um, so uh, I got I got some uh, so I'm really new to static generation thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm just more of a user than a builder. Oh, good. Um, but does does this work more like so every time you push to that GitHub repo, it'll just update the update the website automatically. Is that is that kind of the assumption or? Uh, I mean, if you wanted to, that's kind of just a question of how you want to set up your branching. If you push directly to master, usually that's where it's going to actually trigger trigger the build. But um, yeah, you're you're correct. That's kind of the, the whole idea of like the quote unquote jam stack is that your site is just hooked up to your Git repo. So your site is essentially version controlled and your whatever is deployed is your master branch. Yeah, and, and that's actually a, a, not a thing of Elder. That's a thing of Netlify or other hosting that offers that continuous deployment that essentially that's what that's doing. Yeah, it's kind of like an evolution of things like GitHub pages. So you had Jekyll yeah. and GitHub pages was kind of the first like iteration of this like 10 years ago. And people built out more and more tooling around it and made more and more sophisticated sites. And then it was kind of rebranded as like the Jamstack is what it's kind of referred to as as now. But um, it's really just about not even necessarily about the, the static. It's about the fact that it can be on a CDN. Like that's what's important because it's on a CDN, no matter where you are in the world, you can like have a very short hop to get to it. So that's that's also why you really want that because then you're going to be able to be globally distributed in a way you can't with like a WordPress monolith. That makes sense. Um, so, so the S, so like, so does this, just some more uh, questions. So does Elder like generate like the sitemap.xml and does it basically like you build an Elder site and it just takes care of all the SEO for you or how, how does that how does that work? Um, I'm not sure about generating the, the sitemap specifically. I would imagine that's probably something that you could do with it fairly easily. It's the idea is that um, it has you set up with like meta tags and just being having it all built out in general and having really good like HTML is what lets the crawler see. Because the thing is that with single page applications, if your whole thing is just a JavaScript bundle, like a web crawler can't understand that unless it first executes the JavaScript, builds the page, and then crawls it, which Google will do, but it still penalizes sites for that. Basically, the longer it takes them to actually crawl your page, the worse your SEO is going to be. So by being able to just hand it like a plate of HTML, it's, and you can like read it very quickly, that also then leads to better like performance and better rankings. So it's all kind of correlated because there's many metrics that go into this. So it's not like one thing is good SEO. So this is one metric among many. Okay. So El Elder's more, it, it makes it easy for the search engines to crawl it. Yes. Does, exactly. does, it, also, does it also take care of like, um, or does it, it makes it just a thing, but does it take care of like all the, social media sharing stuff. Like I know there's like special meta tags you got to put in for like the header. If you want to like, if you want like, if you, if you want to control the picture that displays on Facebook or, or whatever. Um, you know, I don't know actually, cause um, I haven't, I've built like a couple of projects with Elder and I'm like kind of migrating my site to it, but um, I definitely haven't gone into every single nook and cranny of it. It's got um, a plugins section. So, what was the thing that you're, oh, so, okay, here we go. So it has plugins for sitemap, markdown, images, 
browser reload, critical paths, CSS, um, has plugin for uh, internationalization, has a plugin for Google fonts, and it has instructions for writing and adding a plugin. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's basically asking like if it does it automatic Twitter cards. I know that there's yeah. plugins for like Gatsby for that kind of stuff, but I don't know. Yeah, or something like you, so you want like OG well, tags, right? right? You'd want um original gra- open graph tags, right? That's what we don't want for that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So Anthony, is it is it doing the metadata behind the scene? Like, how's the metadata being added? Like, is it trying to figure out like titles and descriptions and keywords and things like that from your content source, or um, or is that like more manual? I'm... It's a good question. So I'm not really sure about the all the the internals sure. of it. It has to do with the. I know that basically it's like the helpers and the data objects is what is able to like make your whole site kind of like aware of what it is. So I imagine it's just probably a he just created a lot of good defaults. Cause it's one of those things where I'm kind of putting trust in Nick that he it did this in a way that he wanted. Cause he spent like years and years and years building a thing where he wanted a thing to use this thing. So honestly, I can't really say I've gone like super in depth into like the actual technicality of all this stuff. All I know is that like builds super fast. It's super awesome to use and that, uh, Swix is using it and Swix knows what he's doing and his site like has insane SEO from what I've seen. So I've actually seen it in practice. I see, I've seen a person with an older site that I know has good SEO because it's ranked very highly in many searches I've made. So I can, I've always been empirically verifying that this thing actually does work the way we're saying it works, but I don't really know entirely why yet. Cool. Give me a couple months. Maybe I can give you a concrete answer to that question. <laughs> nice. Um, I had another question around routing. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is so you, what I can probably answer. <laughs> so you showed like, um, so you, you set up like a, a new kind of like type and you had a, a component that you put in there and then you um, specified like the permalink. Now, um, can you feed like multiple content sources from the same component? Like, could you have multiple pages using like the same? So that's the whole idea template? of the hooks. The hooks is so you can okay. have all that sort of functionality you want and you can kind of like, finagle your data around into the places you want it to be. So there's like, that's why there's like a dozen of those. And that's really, if you want to build like a really complex site, that's going to be passing around a lot of data. That's what, that's what the hooks are for. And so there's um, a lot of information on that in the, in the docs. It's yeah. cool. It's really cool. So uh, I have a question. What's the, what's the role of a server? and uh, roll up the two tasks that you have running parallelly. Which one is yeah, doing so, what? Yeah, so roll up is watching the dev server for changes and that's what's doing the the updating. So you have the dev server, which I would imagine is basically like the, the Svelte compiler, right? Like you have something that's, that's compiling Svelte and then the the roll, I know, so I know, all I know is that the roll up server is watching the dev server. So that's all I can really tell you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to uh, wrap my head around what what are the two, like, what uh, both of them are running. Uh, one of them is doing the HTTP serving, which is probably the server. Yep. I am trying to figure out what is rollup. R- rollup will, doing. will bundle and compile the components, I think, right? So, like, rollup's Here, I got com- probably compiling sorry, all the sorry. components and then... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, so I'm just pulling up the, the GitHub right here um i thought i explained it oh yeah, yeah just... i think i think roll up is compiling like you're saying and then server is basically running sort of like sapper yeah. in a sense yeah, server server like the local web server right yeah this is what the this is what the docs say so they have a little explanation for for each so the the dev server it says uh doesn't rebuild your spell components so the the roll up is what's rebuilding the Svelte components. So I guess the dev oh, server is just what's like running yeah. your website, and then the roll up is what's actually doing the compiling of the Svelte. Is what it sounds like. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but by the way, yeah, so something similar happens in Chapter. In Chapter, Chapter itself is the server, and then there is a roll up task running, which is really compiling all your code changes. So, okay. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, I haven't. I was going to get into Sapper back in like July, and then kind of ended up putting it off for a while. And I'm really glad I did now because now <laughs> it's kind of like switching to like this Svelte kit thing, yeah. which sounds really cool. Because I'm super into like serverless stuff, so 
Yeah. Svelte kit will probably be the next Svelte talk I'll do. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, that reminds that... me. Oh, Svelte kit was supposed to be released in uh, last year, and it's uh, you know six weeks into the new year almost. Any well, they put something out in November that you could use. That's it was just yeah. like released as saying like don't use this is basically what they said in the docs. Like here it is, don't use it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, I was they, gonna. They didn't give a deadline their ETA for it. They were like, soon as we can. We well, can't put so... timelines on these things. Like anyone who's yeah. working on open source knows that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was. I was gonna ask, uh, and this is this is for uh, uh, both you and uh, Jim. Are Are you guys thinking about when when Swelt Kit comes out? Like, um, do you, Do you have any plans as far as integrating it in or? What what are, what are you what are your thought processes with all that? I'm kind of curious. Well, I, I just said I'm not really using any of these things for, like production applications. Like the only thing I really do this for is like for my own personal sites and just side projects and to keep myself up with like what's happening because I, I enjoy learning and, and writing it. But um, like my my job is is totally different. I do like GraphQL stuff, which has like nothing at all to do to do with Svelte, but. One day we might have some spelt front ends to our crazy GraphQL back end. So that's kind of the, the long term goal there. But um, yeah, so I, for me, it's just like whenever these things come out, I basically spin up a couple of simple projects, figure out how to deploy it, and then kind of like create some content around it as you are seeing here. It's kind of, kind of why I do exactly both learn it and hopefully spread some knowledge to other people and awareness about these tools. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, I, and I, oh, I have a small personal site too that I was playing. Like right now I was kind of playing around with um, building it in Sapper, but with kind of the idea of like moving it to a spell kit for the hell of it to when that pops. Actually, I I recently built a site with Routify and, and uh, Spank. Huh. So static site. So I, I basically, I, I'm like I'm trying to make everything serverless, which means uh, Sapper won't do. Uh, you can um, you can export to ser you can export to static from Sapper. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That's true. But but Sapper, if you are going to do that anyways, then why not use Routify? Yeah, Routify. I've been playing that 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 too. It's pretty nice. Yeah. So 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 what I did. But I came across something very interesting, and I saw solved that problem, which is I, I I exported the site. First of all, you write the site in in Routify the way normally you would Routify handles the route, fine. But then you run Spank at it. Spank is basically another thing that Jacob Rosenberg invented, and it it basically hits your uh, single page application and uh, uh, runs all the routes, and then dumps them in, you know. It basically runs a, a, a Node.js browser uh, against your site and generates the output into HTML. Now that's your uh, exported pre-rendered site, fine. That part is good. Uh, that works nicely. But then I needed to do a little bit of client-side interactivity, and I needed to create some models and so on and so forth. So when I, now, at that point, I want to do, use more swell, but wait a second. I already ran the spank at it, right? Now, how do I, how, this is a problem of, of a client side swelt versus server side swelt. And um, so server side swelt got rendered during, uh, during pre rendering, but client side swelt needs to be rendered in the browser at runtime. So finally, I, I solved that problem by having two entry points, a main.js for server-side rendering, and then a client.js, which also is injected into my index.html, um, and that's for client-side rendering. So, I mean, that, that uh, and it gave me both. Cool. At first I thought I will have to do uh, rehydration, partial hydration and whatnot. But I, I didn't have to do that. I simply have two entry points, one for SSR and one for CSR. Kind of works. Nice. I don't know if I was able to explain. No, I, I, I think 
I understand what you were trying to do with it. Cause that's another thing I'm, I want to do with the, the big bad con gaming site that I'm, cause there's going to be part of it that can just all be static. And there's enough, the game list that's going to probably need to be all, uh, more SSR and uh, with a lot of client stuff because of the, you know, getting a badge and signing up for games and stuff. It's more of an app. So. Cool. Cool. Thanks, uh, Anthony. This was good. Um, yeah. Careful. Um, yeah. yeah what, thanks. what about the, what are the use case? Sorry. I have another question for Anthony. Yeah. Uh, what are the, like, I, I, I'm, I'm not able to understand the use Massive case. content yeah. sites. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. If you have like a website with like, so think of like MDN, like Mozilla Developer Network. That'd be that'd be a good use case for this. Anthony, have you mm. have you looked into um, or have you talked with Nick at all about um, like the build optimizations? Like, obviously, producing tons of content is pretty mm-hmm. quick. Like. Um, is that just roll up doing its thing, compiling spell components? Do you know, or like, wh- like how is that process sped up so fast? Yeah, you have you have to ask him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's he he gave a talk that um for spell society, which you also give a talk for. I would say I would I would point you there that he's gonna be able to give you like a much more coherent answer that, than I can. Yeah, so yes, that's where I would point anybody. Sure. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, I'll have to take a look back on that. It's been a while since I saw that. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, I, I wish I had deeper answers to this, and if I was, like, not also doing another job and another open source <laughs> project, I would, like, dig deeper into, like, some of these, like, more technical questions, like, this is the only framework I was doing, but this is kind of just, like, a side thing that I think is really cool, and, like, no one's making content about Elder right now, no one's making content about, like, any of these spell yeah, things, yeah. Well, and so I just want to put more out there into the, into the world. <laughs> for sure, yeah, no, I thought this was great, and I, I saw another video yeah. you made on the same topic, I thought it was awesome, so I... Yeah, you're doing a yeah this job. is just that presentation uh, again because yeah. I just took it and did, did it again. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. cool. Thank you guys for having me. This is like I always appreciate these kind of meetup talks. And me and Jim go way back now. We both did Jamstack <laughs> Denver many many months ago, and so it's it's always so always good to see you, man. So yeah. thanks for coming out, and thanks Noah for always putting this together. Yeah, of course. Um, but before we uh, what. Uh, before we hit the road, um, is there any um, is there any talks that are any any things any topics you guys want to hear about? Uh, I can I can reach out to people. Uh, I can reach out to a lot of people. And uh, so, if there's anything that you want to hear, or any uh, swell packages you want to hear about, um, uh, please let me know, and uh, I can I can probably get a talk arranged. Uh, if we want to talk about ratify, that would be great because i kind of started messing around with that but i'm curious about how it works so ratify okay yeah i can i can cool. uh, i can definitely get a talk on ratify that's that's pretty easy great <laughs> okay yeah so maybe uh so yeah maybe in that case uh maybe next uh since we're since we're doing these uh well uh, talks next one will be ratify that'll be good how to set up and deploy a Ratify site or something like that. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, any, 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 like anything on Swell Kit would be great. So, okay, I want to uh, yeah. check with the group about uh, my understanding of it. So, whatever I I checked on Swell Kit, I'm already able to see do that with Snowpack. Am I missing something? What well, has Snowpack in it? Mm-hmm. Snowpack is part of Swell Kit. Yeah, but, it's just a base bundler, essentially. No, but what I'm saying is that when I uh, uh, when I uh, if I do a create Snowpack app, or if I if I uh, so what are you getting from that you wouldn't get from Snowpack? Basically, that's what, that's what you're wondering. Yeah, I'm just trying to find out whether the, what is it that Swellkit will add that I'm not getting from Snowpack currently. Snowpack and this way. Snowpack do the serverless uh, stuff, so if, like running cloud functions and all that. I think that's kind of what the the whole dream is. Like the kind of like that's why they're saying Spell's a serverless first framework now, or Spell is a serverless first framework because it's going to be written to be deployed specifically to like these kind of like edge handler things. And I think like and and I saw Rich Rich's talk. I'm sure a lot a lot of people did, but I think um, his vision is like. 
there's just one framework for there's no longer sapper and, and swell it's just one giant thing it can either be like a single page app but you just start with that one thing and if you want it to have more than one pages it just does more than one pages but um but, but we'll see yeah I'm, I, I have a few sapper projects that are pretty big myself so i'm definitely uh definitely wanting to know what the future is <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, and I think, so it's more than Snowpack, right? Because it's going to have the routing figured out in there and, and a lot of other things that are, like, framework-oriented, so. It, it's really just a yeah, rebrand of, of Sapper, really, right? Like, I mean, like, may, maybe different yeah. code base and everything, but it's, like, Sapper 2.0 is how I would look at it. Yeah, it's basically, they were like, do we want to advance Sapper or do we want to kind of rewrite it with all the RI new ideas? And that's essentially what they're doing. Yeah, that's... They're rebuilding Sapper with uh, with all their new ideas because they, they realized they couldn't add on. So mm -hmm. yeah, Snowpack is yeah. essentially just their kind of like develop, just like the development like super modern bundler. I mean, and you can there are like Snowpack if you want to run a Svelte project with Snowpack, uh, at least for running your development, you can. There's uh, I've played around with that. It's nice and fast. Um, at least for development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Jim, do, do you, do, have you been working a lot on uh, planting? Yeah, I, I mean, not the last like week and a half or so, just because I've been booked with work. But like, um, yeah, I've been working a ton on it, um, and a few other people are, are contributing now too, which is cool um, to see. So, it's moving along. Yeah, so, uh, someone wrote an article about it the other day. Yeah, that's probably probably Thanks. my girlfriend Stephanie, uh, possibly, but maybe someone else. Um, <laughs> uh, if someone else wrote it, that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're we're cruising. I mean, it's like there's so much to do. There's so many little quirky things to like building a, a CLI tool and just like making things better. Um, some like hot reloadings coming and um, like just a bunch of optimization things. Yeah, it looks cool. I I've, I've only kind of like read the page on it. But... Yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. Pretty open to discussing it. Does it do uh, pre-rendering, like a static side generation and all that? It's like, the yeah, so the whole, it, that's kind of its whole bag, right? So it's supposed to be like a Jamstack first, Jamstack only <laughs> framework. Um, so basically it'll create HTML fallbacks for every route, uh, but it hydrates and then client side routes on top of it. Um, but yeah, so it should, so, you know, so the role of Go, the Go is on, there only at build time. Is that right? So, so go, yeah, basically, I, I wrap uh, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. I wrap everything up into like a, a single binary because it's all written in Go. But then you don't need you don't need Go. You actually don't need uh, Node.js or npm or anything roll up or anything on your computer to run it. So it's all in a single binary that you download. So you can use a package manager or something. No, but but can you like? At runtime, when you're serving it, can you uh, deploy it to serverless? The, deploy it to serverless? Like deploy it to a CDN? Or, or what do you mean by deploy it to serverless? Like have serverless functions yeah, like I mean, to interact with it? You, if it? If it outputs everything to HTML, then you can deploy it to serverless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you can, you can, I'm hosting like the plenty.co website on GitHub pages. Um, we have some other things hosted on like GitLab pages, GitHub pages. But you could put it on Netlify or any CDN. Um, it's just static. So, so. So, the, so the Go server is needed only at dev time, not at runtime. Yeah, the the Go server is just a local web server, just to make it easy to to look at your site. Okay. Nice. Yeah, the right. the new job that I have steps in. It's basically like one giant Go project oh, yeah? that is completely incomprehensible to me. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I'm kind of like the front end guy writing things that are gonna like interact with that crazy API. So um, I'll get deeper and deeper into it as the months and months go on. <laughs> nice. Have you done Go work in the past, or are you learning now? So that's what. So I said. So I'm not writing the, the oh, Go code at all. Because it's basically like there's there's kind of like the the team is basically split in half. There's like the back end team which is writing the whole the whole system, and then there's like the other half which is like front developers and like developer advocates who are kind of like building projects on top of it. Because the whole point of it is like a thing to connect all your APIs so your front end can like have a really simple interface they can they can query, that being GraphQL. And cool. so um, that's kind of the, so I'm kind of like working on creating like content and examples and building out stuff 
um, like the front end stuff that's going to connect to it and stream all the data, the data in. So I'm not working on the the, co the Go code base at all. I'm writing like next projects and Apollo and like stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah, no, it's super new. I've only been doing it for like less than it's gonna be two weeks tomorrow, I think. Yeah, nice. we just had our first presentation today for Jamstack SF, which is cool. Oh, Tessa. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, congrats yeah, on your so. gig. That sounds cool. Yeah, that no, was great. Cause I've been trying to get a job since <laughs> way before. <laughs> yeah, everyone's in that first boat. one. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice man. That's great. Yeah. Nice. Pretty sweet. All right. Well, um, okay, cool. So yeah, so I think next month we'll do uh, Routify, and um, yeah, th thank you, a Anthony, for giving the talk on. Uh, yeah, I got a lot out of it, and uh, and yeah, if uh, any questions or feedback, uh, definitely open to hearing it. Please let me know. Cool. Yeah, thanks, have a good Anthony. One. Thanks, Noah. Thanks. Good seeing everyone. Thanks all. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you. Bye.